blade and quill. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to transform this static picture into a short animated GIF. But before the start, it is important that you understand how to use the animation workspace. Let's have a look. The easiest way to access all the different workspaces available in Krita is to use the Choose Workspace button located in the upper right corner of the interface. I am talking about this button right here. Click on it. In the menu, choose Animation. Click anywhere on the interface to get out of this window. We are going to personalize this workspace. Go to Settings, choose Dockers, and here click on Advanced Color Selector. This will bring up the color wheel. Click on the tab Overview and click on the X button located right here to close the docker. We are going to do the same with the palette. Click on the palette tab and close it. Click on Compositions tab and close it. We are going to keep the Tool Options docker. If you look here, right behind the animation timeline, you will see a tab called Animation Curves. Animation Curves is a tool usually used for complex animations. Since we are not going to use it, we can close this tab. Now, I don't know about you, but I like my layers to be on the right side of the interface. And right now, the layers are located on the left side. To move a docker, click on this button here, the float docker button. Now grab it and drag it with your left mouse button to the position where you want it to be. We are going to do the same with the Onion Skins Docker. Alright, let's talk about the Onion Skin. First thing first, you can turn it on or off at any time. To turn off your Onion Skins Docker, click on this button located right here. To turn it back on, click on it again. Here is a little animation made of seven frames. If you click on this button, the animation settings menu, you will see that the animation starts at frame zero and ends at frame seven. To play your animation, click on the play button. You can pause or stop the animation. Let's play again. You can increase the speed of your animation by sliding this little slider right here. Or you can increase the speed by increasing the frame rate. The larger the number, the faster. The lower the number, the slower. Let's stop. Let's have a look at the Onion Skins Docker. I am going to click on a frame in the middle of my animation and I am going to activate the Onion Skins Docker by clicking on this little icon right here. It looks like a light bulb. Now look at this. I am on this frame. I have three frames after this. The next frames are previewed in purple. The previous frames are previewed in green. You can change the color of your previews anytime. Just click on the window and choose a new color. 
you can decrease the saturations of your colors. Now let's talk about opacity. You can make each of your preview more opaque or more transparent. If you want your first preview to be more opaque, slide this column up. If you want it to be more transparent, slide it down. We're going to do the same on the other side more opaque and more transparent. Before to continue, let me share a tip with you. When you work with the onion skin, it's better to have less frame previews than more. So what I do is that I just get rid of all the other previews, I make everything transparent, and I only focus on the previews that I have before or after. When you are done working with your animation, the only thing that you need to do is uh, turn off your onion skins by turning off that little light bulb. Now that you have done all the changes, it is time to save your new workspace. Go back to the Choose a Workspace button and right here, uh, name your workspace. And click Save. Now if you go back to the button, you will see your workspace right here. All right, uh, we are ready to create our animation. First things first, uh, lock your background. Uh, this way you won't paint on it by accident. Create a new layer. Click F2 to rename it. And click Enter. Our very first step is going to turn this regular layer into an animated layer. We will do so by adding our first keyframe in the timeline right here. The starting frame of any animation is called a blank keyframe, so let's create it. Go to the timeline on the very first square right here and right click. Now select create a blank frame. We are ready to draw our first frame. So uh, grab your brush, make sure you have a color that you want, make sure that the pen pressure is turned off, choose a right size and uh, start a drawing. Now that we have our first keyframe done, we need to animate it. Let's go back to the uh, timeline. We are clicking on the next frame, the next square. Right click and this time select Create Duplicate Frame. Now we still have our brush activated. Turn on the onion skin. Now grab your eraser and increase its size. Remove the tip and the top part of the ears because the onion skin is turned on, you can see the previous slide. It is a previewed in Cyan. Undo the eraser. Get back to the size of your brush. And start making the corrections needed. We are ready to move to the next slide. Click on the third square first. Now right click and same thing here. Create a duplicate frame. 
back geo eraser and make some more changes on the ears back to the brush and to a 5 pixel size I am going to make some more changes on this slide I am going to use my lasso tool and I am going to move the eyebrows just a little up now use the move tool and move them up here we go Control shift a to undo the selection back to the lasso tool we are going to increase the size of the eyes but we are going to do this one at a time now use the transform tool hold the shift key and increase the size of the first eye enter to apply the changes and undo the selection Control shift plus a grab your lasso tool again and do the same with the other eye Since its eyes went a little bigger, we are going to add some effect. We just use the transform tool, so we have to get back to our brush. Time to create the fourth frame. Click on the fourth square first right click and select create duplicate frame back to the eraser this time i am going to leave the ears alone and i'm going to focus on the eyes and the little effects i created earlier back to the brush and to five pixel size my next step is to make the droplet higher and bigger Using the mirror tool, I am going to work on the eyebrows. And uh, try to create that uh, effect of surprise. Don't forget that the shortcut to get the eraser is the letter E on your keyboard. Alright, let's undo the mirror tool. I am going to play my uh, little animation. So go to the animation settings menu. And as you can see so far, I have four frames. So I'm going to type a four in the clip end. And the frame rate is very slow, it's three. I'm going to leave it uh, this way and I'm going to hit play and see how it plays all right that's not bad let's stop it and let's click on the next frame and as usual right click and select create duplicate frame And we are done for today. 
Next time, I will show you how to color this uh, little GIF animation. In the next tutorial, I will also show you more animation tips. Uh, we have uh, way too many things to learn to put in a single video. That said, I will see you next time uh, wherever you are. I wish you all a wonderful day. Au revoir et à bientôt.